Well, bonjour, Annie. I forget my quad, the schnakas, my quate, the schnakas, my quad o dem, the ashinga ming and donjiba. Today we give thanks to the waters that connect us as nations. We give thanks to the lakes and the rivers that flow and allow us to travel and connect as communities, to share our teachings, to share our knowledge, to share our systems of how we live together in peace. With that, we say chimiguach. The Nuclear Waste Management Organization is responsible for the safe, long-term management of all of Canada's used nuclear fuel, and really making sure that we're protecting people and the environment in that process. The name of my community is Neashingaming, which means a point of land surrounded by three points of water. Within an Indigenous worldview, we really see water as Mother Earth's lifeline. It really is that thread of life to all creation. I think what Indigenous nations are asking people globally is to understand that connection. We really think about the next seven generations and how we're making decisions. But in our work, it's important that we're learning from the wisdom of our ancestors and then thinking about the best for the future generations and that we're not adding burden to the decisions they have to make, that they have you know, clean drinking water, that they have lakes and rivers that they can swim in, that they have beautiful rainwaters falling down to cleanse them. I think as Indigenous women, we actually come from a long line of strong matriarchs. And from my mother, I think I learned really to be strong in my beliefs, but to approach it with kindness. As an Indigenous person working within kind of that technical space, I really see my role as, as kind of a bridge between both those ways of knowing. So it's um, breaking down those silos that exist within colonialistic systems that have been really driven to kind of push heart intelligence down. And by leaning on the richness and, and sophistication of Indigenous knowledge or Indigenous science in that work, it really just adds another layer on. I think one thing we've learned from the Council of Elders and Youth and Indigenous communities we're working with, we can't just say things. <laughs> we really have to make sure that we're developing policies and corporate commitments. And if we don't have those commitments in things like, you know, the Indigenous Knowledge Policy or the Reconciliation Policy or now the Water Statement, it really is then not holding us accountable to, to have to do that work. The purpose of the Water Statement is to make sure we're making a commitment to water protection in all aspects of our work. Its purpose is to ensure that we're working with community and understanding their priorities. And so what we did is we worked with uh, indigenous communities that had women's circles and brought it to them as a draft, a very early draft to, you know, get their feedback and say, you know, what do you think? And did we get it right? So it was really important that people saw themselves in it. They saw their knowledge amplified and respected in the same way that we respect Western science in the process. And so we also have to think about how are we acknowledging not only the people that we're working with in that area, but the land that we're working with. Listening to the land and then incorporating that voice into shaping who we are as an organization. The water statement is that kind of foundational piece to make sure that we are making those commitments. I think it will be vital to our success.